ميساء توبة المرحلة الثانية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم محاضرتنا عن posterior abdominal wall the posterior abdominal wall consists from in the midline from the five lumbar vertebrae five lumbar vertebrae with their intervertebral discs laterally it have the twelve ribs and the upper part of the pelvic bone that is the upper part of the ilium the muscles that are forming the posterior abdominal wall these are the two soas muscles soas major soas minor quadratus lumborum iliacus muscle quadratus lumborum as we can see here the two soas muscle and the iliacus and the upper part of the diaphragm so these are the structure that are forming the posterior abdominal wall on the posterior abdominal wall we have certain structure that is attached to it we call this structure are retroperitoneum why they are retroperitoneum because they are covered partially by peritoneum and they are tethered on the posterior abdominal wall from these structures this is the inferior vena cava aorta kidney suprarenal gland and the ureters all the structure are called retroperitoneal they are situated behind the peritoneum the third to the posterior abdominal wall the first structure that is important to be studied is the abdominal aorta abdominal aorta it is important to be studied why because of the clinical application on the aorta which is the catheterization the abdominal aorta enter the abdominal cavity through the aortic opening which is the opening in the diaphragm at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra then it descends down in front of the lumbar vertebrae until divide at the level of the L4 that is the bifurcation of the aorta at the level of L4 fourth lumbar vertebrae into two main divisions the branches of the aorta aorta have a midline branches these are midline visceral branches lateral visceral branches lateral parietal branches that supply the wall and the terminal branches the midline visceral branches are the celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery these branches midline visceral branches it will supply the gi tract the celiac trunk will supply the foregut the superior mesenteric artery will supply the midgut and the inferior mesenteric artery will supply the hindgut. طبعا هنا عندنا السيلك ترنك will supply the foregut with its derivative يعني liver, gallbladder, spleen and pancreas. The lateral visceral branches supply the organs or the viscera that's situated laterally on both sides of the aorta. These are the suprarenal artery, renal and the gonadal that is the testicular or ovarian artery. The parietal branches that supply the wall, the posterior abdominal wall, these are the inferior phrenic artery that supply the diaphragm, the lumbar arteries that supply the posterior abdominal wall, and the median sacral artery. As we said before, the aorta will bifurcate at the level of the fourth lumbar vertebrae. This is the bifurcation of the aorta into two common iliac artery the two common iliac artery the common iliac artery will divide at the sacroiliac joint into external iliac and internal iliac we can see here that the, at the bifurcation of the common iliac artery the ureter will cross this bifurcation and it will enter the pelvic cavity the Internal iliac artery will pass to the pelvis 
to supply the organs, pelvic organ, while the external iliac artery will follow the medial border of this muscle, which is the south major muscle, and then it pass under the inequine ligament to become the femoral artery. Femoral artery, which is the main blood supply to the lower limb. The external iliac artery, it, it gives two important branches. One that pass laterally to the anterior superior spine. This is called the deep circumflex iliac artery. Deep circumflex iliac artery pass toward the anterior superior spine to supply the anterior abdominal wall. And another one that pass medially upward and medially called inferior epigastric artery that passes up until it reach the adequate line of the rectus sheath to pass in the rectus sheath. So it have two branches, deep circumflex iliac artery and the inferior epigastric artery. As we see here, the inferior epigastric artery is medial to the deep inequinal ring. This is a summary to the branches of the abdominal aorta. We can review them. Three anterior branches to the viscera, that's three anterior viscera branches, unpaired. Three lateral paired branches to the viscera and five lateral paired branches to the parietes, that's the ball, parietal branches, and the three terminal branches, that is the right common iliac, me, median sacral, and the left common iliac artery. Relation of the aorta. The inferior vena cava li lie on the right side of the aorta. Also on the right side in the abdomen, we have the cisterna cali, cisterna cali and the beginning of the azygous vein on the right side. While on the left side of the aorta, we have the left sympathetic trunk, left sympathetic trunk. As we said before, the clinical application for to study the it is important to study the anatomy of the aorta. This is for the to know the principles of the procedure which is called the aortic catheterization. From here we can see that the catheter is passed through the femoral artery to the external iliac to the common iliac and then through the abdominal aorta, thoracic aorta, and then to pass in the aortic arch to reach to the coronary artery to do either uh, therapeutic therapeutic or investigation to the coronary artery the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava this is large vein to drain blood venous blood from the lower part of the body below the diaphragm to drain blood to the right atrium of the heart. The inferior vena cava we can see here from this figure it is in the abdominal part it is longer than the aorta. The aorta lie on the left side of the inferior vena cava. What are the veins of origin? That is the inferior vena cava is formed on the posterior abdominal wall at the level of the fifth lumbar vertebrae by the union of the right and left common iliac veins with the median sacral vein. The inferior vena cava is formed behind the right common iliac artery. Formation of the inferior vena cava at the level of the fifth lumbar vertebrae then it ascends up on the posterior abdominal wall at, until it reaches the level of the T8 8th thoracic vertebra where it enter through the central tendon of the diaphragm to pass to the thoracic cavity. The inferior vena cava passes through the diaphragm, through the central tendon of the diaphragm, through an opening called cable opening, cable opening at the level of T8. What are the tributaries of the inferior vena cava in the abdomen? It have two anterior visceral tributaries, three 
lateral visceral tributaries, five lateral abdominal wall tributaries, three veins of origin. Now I show this is the inferior vena cava. These are two to three anterior visceral tributaries, which are the hepatic veins. These are the veins that's coming from the liver here to drain directly to the inferior vena cava. Three lateral visceral tributaries, these are the right suprarenal, renal vein, and the right gonadal. We have, why we don't say the left, left suprarenal? Left suprarenal will drain into the left renal vein, and the left gonadal, also the left gonadal will drain into the left renal vein. These are the three lateral visceral tributaries. Lateral abdominal wall tributaries, these are that's coming from the uh, posterior abdominal wall, these are the inferior phrenic vein, it will drain into the inferior vena cava, and the lumbar veins that's coming from the posterior abdominal wall drain to the inferior vena cava. What are the relations of the inferior vena cava? What are the structures nearby to the inferior vena cava? These are, we can see here, the aorta is on the left side of the inferior vena cava. The right ureter, it is on the right border of the inferior vena cava. The epiploic foramen here, this is space, epiploic foramen is separating the inferior vena cava from the portal vein in front. Another important relation posterior to the inferior vena cava is the right sympathetic trunk. We can see here that the gonadal vessel, the right gonadal vessel, will cross anterior, will cross anterior to the inferior vena cava. What are the lymphatics on the posterior abdominal wall? We have the pre-aortic lymph nodes and the para-aortic. Pre-aortic is situated in front of the aorta. These are celiac node, superior mesenteric node, and the inferior mesenteric node. The paraortic or another name is the lateral aortic or lumbar lymph nodes that's situated on both sides of the aorta. These are the pre-aortic that's situated around the origin of the main vessels, three, yani midline visceral branches, the celiac nodes around the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric node around the origin of the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric nodes around the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery. These are the para-aortic or lumbar nodes situated on both sides of the aorta. The, the pre-aortic, para-aortic lymph node will drain lymph from different region. The pre-aortic lymph node will drain the lymph from the GI tract, that is from the all the gut tube on their derivative, and from the lower one third of the oesophagus down to the upper half of the anal canal from the spleen, pancreas, gallbladder, and liver. While the paraortic drain lymph from structure on both sides of the vertebral column, that is the kidney, suprarenal, testis, ovaries, uterine tube, fundus of the uterus, and the female, abdominal wall, and the common iliac nodes. Here, from this lymph node, it will lead to the right and left lumbar trunk with the intestinal trunk to form the cisterna chile. Cisterna chile, this is a dilated sac that contains the lymph situated on the posterior abdominal wall at the midline in front of the first and second lumbar vertebra. From the cisterna chile, the thoracic duct will ascend up. This is the two right and left lumbar trunk with the intestinal trunk they will unite to form the cisterna cali and the cisterna cali will continue as the thoracic duct that ascend in the thoracic cavity. The last part of our lecture is the lumbar plexus. The lumbar plexus, this is a plexus of nerve we can see from this figure, plexus of nerves that is uh, formed within the substance of this muscle, which is called the psoas major muscle. Some of its branches 
will or will be will pass from the right side sum of its branches from its and uh, come from the lateral side some from the medial side and some from the interior surface this forms from the ventral remind of the upper four lumbar nerve in hole one or two or three or four ventral remind will form this lumbar plexus it is formed in the subas muscle from the anterior remind of the upper four lumbar nerve and the branches of the plexus image from the lateral medial and the anterior surfaces of the subas muscle show phenomenal branches this is the subas major muscle uh, this is the these are the branches that is emerging from the lateral side of the source major muscle these are iliohypogastric iliohypoguinal and the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh femoral nerve from the anterior surface we have this one the genitofemoral nerve and from the medial side we will see uh, another branches from the lateral border these are the nerve that is emerging it's called iliohypogastric nerve, the first one from above downward, iliohypogastric, iliohypogastric, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, and lastly, the femoral nerve. All these are from the lateral border of psoas major. From the medial border, we have the obturator nerve, and the fourth lumbar root of the lumbosacral trunk. From the anterior surface, we have the genitofemoral nerve. Here we can see these nerves are ranged from above downward from the lateral margin of the source major. These are the iliohypogastric, iliolinguinal, lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, and we can see how it is passing in front of the iliacus muscle to the lateral side to pass below the lateral side of the inguinal ligament to supply to supply structures skin on the lateral side of the thigh. And the femoral nerve, this is the femoral nerve passing in between source major and iliacus and then into the femoral triangle below the inguinal ligament this is a diagram showing the nerves that is emerging from the lumbar plexus from this is these are the from the lateral side we repeat them the uh, arranged from above downward iliohypogastric nerve iliohypogastric then lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh the femoral nerve from the anterior surface, this is genitofemoral nerve, and from the medial side we have the we have the obturator nerve and the lumbosacral trunk. The obturator nerve, this is the obturator nerve. It will pass in front of the sacroiliac joint. This is the sacroiliac joint. Then on the lateral wall of the pelvis, lateral pelvic wall to reach to the obturator foramen and it will pass through the obturator foramen to the medial side of the thigh or to the adductor compartment of the thigh. While the lumbosacral trunk, this is the, what we call the lumbosacral trunk, is formed by the root from the fourth lumbar nerve and this lumbosacral trunk will pass in front of the LA this is the L of the sacrum. And then it will join the first sacral nerve to share in the formation of the sacral plexus. Thank you.